everyone! Today we'll be discussing a new productivity method that has been gaining momentum across the internet and that method is called time batching. Before we start, I want to thank PDF Element Express for sponsoring today's show. PDF Element Express is a PDF editor that is stripped down to its basics, offering a seamless experience while you are reading and annotating your documents. Although the interface is simple, it allows you to quickly add comments, add or edit text or images, as well as hyperlinks. It's a powerful editor that allows you to focus on the really important tools while you are studying or reading, deleting all the bells and whistles from other pro versions and getting back to editing and commenting basics. It has way faster page scrolling and you can view one page at a time, all pages or two pages side by side to achieve the best readability for your needs. PDF Element Express is available on macOS and you can download a free trial if you are curious about this express tool using the links provided down below. So essentially, time batching dictates that similar or identical tasks should be tackled during the same period of time. Establishing a mindset for one task will then allow you to complete other similar tasks while saving your brain from shifting mindsets too often. This basically saves energy, boosts your motivation, and basically allows you to take less time and do more. The good thing about time batching is that you can actually incorporate it into different parts of your life. You can do it with your work schedule, with your long-term projects, and even with your habits. If we use the concept of time batching for your work schedule, we can actually implement this visually into a digital calendar. So here I'm going to use Google Calendar to explain how you should use time batching to maximize your productivity when you are studying or doing your work. So by using time batching, you should basically do or tackle all of the same categorized tasks at the same time. So first of all, you should establish what's the time span when you want to do your time batching. So this means that you need to do your batching according to week, monthly, even yearly tasks. So what's really important for you to understand is that you can do this in different times of your life. So for instance, I use a big yearly time batching method by going to all of my doctor's appointments at the same time. So instead of going to different appointments in different parts of my year, I always schedule a month of the year and it's usually May when it's my birthday and I schedule all of my appointments in that month so I'm sure I'm good to go for the rest of the year. If we talk about monthly batching, I can say that I do some of my cleaning tasks on a monthly basis, like in a specific weekend. I also use time batching for a lot of my financial stuff, so instead of having to go through all of my paperwork on a weekly basis, I do it monthly on a full scheduled afternoon just to tackle paperwork and that takes care of the issue. If we are going to talk about time batching in a weekly manner, I can use my YouTube schedule to actually explain how I do this. So instead of brainstorming, writing my script, filming, editing, and taking thumbnail pictures for each YouTube video on a day or two or three days, what I usually do is brainstorming three, four or five videos in one or two days and those two days are solely dedicated for researching and brainstorming. Then I will save one or two days to write the scripts or at least the bullet points or the topics for my videos. And instead of doing that on a regular basis for each one of my videos, I will save a day to do that for three, four or five videos. And that applies to each process of my YouTube schedule. So that applies to brainstorming, writing, filming, editing and so on. What happens is when I enter into the mindset of writing, I gain momentum by doing that specific task. So instead of gaining momentum and getting into that mindset to then abandon that task and do something completely different like editing, which is a more creative and technical task, I instead save that whole day to do the writing thing and then I'll save a whole day to do the editing. However, you can also time batch long-term projects. I really wanted to write an ebook for a long time for this channel, but when I started writing my master's thesis, I was aware that if I was going to spend time writing an ebook as well as I was writing my dissertation, 
I would not be able to fully optimize my mindset for writing for those two different projects. So I decided that I wanted to write my dissertation in a shorter time by only writing my dissertation for a couple of months and after I finish that project I will start the ebook project and I could completely devote all of my attention to that project instead of being worried about dividing my effort into two different tasks. This also applies for things like language learning. Sometimes you're learning different languages at the same time and your mind is always jumping from the rules of one language to the rules of another language. And when you're learning two or three different languages from scratch, it's sometimes really difficult to carry on with that mindset for a long time. So what I usually do is focusing on one language at a time and then reinforcing my past knowledge and switch back to another language. You can also do time batching with habits. So for instance, if you started the new year with tons of different resolutions for habits, like working out, reading more and so on, it may be very difficult for you to incorporate all of those new habits into your daily routine. So what I suggest is try to concentrate your habits into monthly efforts. You can have the month of March dedicated to fitness. You can say that you want to incorporate new fitness habits into your life, like drinking more water and being more active. And you can try to do that for 30 days straight. After that month, you are going to reinforce those habits and you can start April and introduce a new habit that is focused around another part of your life. You can start reading more during the month of April, but really focusing on the fitness aspect during March. You can then do this for the whole year to fully optimize your time and your attention to build strong habits without having to feel like you're abandoning new projects or that you're abandoning habits that you really can't incorporate into your daily routine. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week with more college, university and organization related videos. Bye!